Som dziękuję. Ông tìm ra bà to sao nào cả Xung chương đu bê nhá bà to xung nùa Thank you and good afternoon, uh, Mr. President, Your Honours, Council Before we commence lunch, you stated that during the Khmer Rouge period, there were two main ways uh, in which uh, people became married, and one was uh, where a couple uh, were authorised to be married, and another way was when a couple were forced to be married. Uh, I want to briefly talk about how authorised marriages worked. Can you explain that uh, process, particularly with uh, an eye to contrasting any differences that may have occurred with the pre-DK Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon. The, the authorised marriage by the Khmer Rouge was very different from the way that people got married before the Khmer Rouge. The, during the Khmer Rouge, if anybody who wanted to marry had to ask permissions from the Khmer Rouge. And this was not the process before the Khmer Rouge time, meaning before the Khmer Rouge time, those who are married did not have to ask permission from the local authority which represents the state or the government. But during the Khmer Rouge time, in order to have a permission to marry, which legalized their relationship. They had to ask permission and approval from the Khmer Rouge that will be also endorsed by the mass wedding. And, and for uh, permission uh, to, be, uh, to be requested, um, did the normal process refer to in the pre-Khmer Rouge period? Of, uh, proposals where the groom may have uh, wanted to, to marry um, a certain woman and he would approach his parents and those parents would approach their parents and there would be a negotiation process and then a proposal would be put Is it similar to the pre-DK period the evidence that I have, that I gathered from the people, may not represent all the marriages which were proposed, but what I have known, from my informants or from my conversation is that the process to arrange the marriage was the similar to prior to Khmer Rouge time so that the parents of both parties had discussions and they agreed upon and then they jointly approached to the Khmer Rouge for the permission. But I also heard the stories that individual women tried to approach the Khmer Rouge asking for permission to marry. So in that sense, I don't have the old evidences about this process. Thank you. And when you say approach the Khmer Rouge, are you talking about central authorities in Phnom Penh, local Khmer Rouge authorities, 
my researches were all at the village level. And the people who are referring to the authority, the Khmer Rouge, is at the village level. Um, through your research, uh, are you aware of considerations of uh, the Khmer Rouge authorities at the village level uh, uh, took into account in whether or not they would approve a marriage? Uh, it's very diverse. And I cannot say it was uniform. For example, some people were allowed, if they were at the certain age range, if they were over 20 or 25, and those people who are young who are not married to marry, so that's one of the restrictions imposed by some authorities, whereas in, at least in Kompon Cham, they didn't allow anybody to marry until certain time. So a lot of people tried to apply for marriage, but the authority denied and told them to wait until certain time, that was in 1978, if I'm not wrong. So it's very diverse. And just with the Canton Charm example, do you know the reason why um, they didn't authorise marriages until a later date? I do not know, and my informants, they also did not know. So we want to know why. And from, from your interviews and, and the research that uh, you have done, um, can you tell the court what the main reason was during the Khmer Rouge period? Why, why um, some men and women proposed um, the marriage? There is a clear difference between men and women for the motivation to propose a marriage. For the women, one of the main driving factor was that the Khmer Rouge injured Khmer Rouge soldiers to select the wife. And it was, I think, from my knowledge, it was nationwide. So many young single women were very scared if she was selected by a former injured Khmer Rouge soldier, unfortunately, who became paralyzed or handicapped, then she had to marry with that soldier. And many single young women were afraid to be selected for this. And this didn't apply to men. And also another important factor for the single young women who tried to rush to marry was that there were certain privileges that they believed that they could enjoy if they were married. That is, for example, any married women could stay close to their parents, which was and is a very important obligation of Cambodian daughters to take care of their parents. And the second one is that many believed that a status as a wife could enable them to reduce their burden of work. So there are several motivations for the young women to propose for the marriage. For the male, I have no information about this. What drives the men to apply for the marriage? Um, <coughs> you referred to um, the ability of... Um, a disabled soldier uh, to choose uh, a marriage, marriage partner. And um, in your study, uh, 
ហើយគាត់ចំណាំងជាមួយជាតិមួយជាតិមួយជាតិមួយជាតិមួយជាតិមួយជាតិមួយជាតិមួយជាតិមួយជាតិមួយជាតិមួយជាតិមួយជាត
ដែលសារថាធ្វើឲ្យការរស់នៅរបស់គាត់មានភាពប្រសើរទៅដែលអ៊ីស្ប្លែនទូយូតាពួកគាត់ទាំងនោះមានជំនាញប្រាប់លោ
Cái chồng sẽ xong 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 về về lễ ấy mới tới về về lễ Every couple Well, not all. Sometimes the representative, but basically every couple was required to make an oath that they were voluntarily married for Angkar. And then the meeting was finished. Was there any Buddhist rituals at the at the wedding ceremony, was there any religious element um, as was um, in the pre-deacon? The Khmer Rouge are both Shia and Buddhist. The Khmer Rouge abolished the religion, so there was no religious ceremony at all, and no monks present at the meeting, the wedding. I think you mentioned this, but um, I didn't specifically ask how long it was for in the each individual, but I would assume that maximum one hour, because when they said there were 100 couples who were marrying in one wedding, they told me there were representatives who were making an oath. Because if every 100 couples were making oath, it is more than one hour already. And everybody said the wedding ceremony was very short. Now, still, um, just speaking about the authorised marriages, um, we move into the forced marriages that you've uh, spoken about, um, with the parents generally present, parents and family at the authorised marriages. Um, so there's a lot of confusion about um, what the parents are only some rare occasions. Some women and men told me that their parents were there, but it was very, very rare. Thank you. And the, um, the celebratory element, the perhaps the music, the food, the dancing, the, dancing, the, dancing, um, the fashion, um, all of those aspects. Common features of these authorised wedding ceremonies, or were they rare? All what you have mentioned were uncommon. It's very diverse, so some people reported that they celebrated the wedding by killing the cow, or there were some special meals, but it was very, very rare. So commonly, there was no ceremony, no dance, nothing, but it was just like a meeting. Thank you. After after these authorized um, marriages had been officiated in that meeting, was uh, the husband and wife were they allowed to uh, live together from that point forward? Yes. And uh, Khmer Rouge provided a small hut for the newlywed couples to stay. For my research shows maybe maximum one day, one week. So it depends like maybe three days to one week. The newlywed were allowed to stay in that hut for the evening. But during the daytime, they had to work somewhere separately. And after perhaps one week, they were already removed. Meaning most often, husband was taken away, or husband was forced to move very far to engage in the hard labor, and after maybe three months, or if he is lucky, one month, he came back to see the wife. And um, 
Can you explain what was the purpose of providing the hut or the house for the night? เอ่อโกลนองไว้ได้ได้ที่ผลดอลแต่ได้ผลดอลโตมหรือก็โกลแต่ตอยๆตอยไปเลยบ่ควรเลยนั้นแต่เปลยุบนั้นน่ะนะ
former Khmer Rouge soldiers who became paralyzed. They were willing to marry with a woman that they have chosen or any woman that the Khmer Rouge may have chosen. But in these marriages with the former soldiers, in most cases, women were forced. They didn't want to marry. You described ซีเรมอนีส์ดิฟเฟอร์เรนท์ยัยธาตุการดิการดอยมีการเซอร์มอนีส์ดิฟเฟอร์เรนท์ยัยธาตุการดิการดอยมีการเซอร์มอนีส
ពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីពីព
ជាពិសេសក្នុងឆ្នាំ was that, was that possibility to marry the If I am not wrong, I hear those possibilities everywhere that I visited. And did you also hear accounts from some ពីពីមួយសូនបាទគឺជាព្រះអ្វ្យូសិនអាមេរិកអរ៉ៃពុះម៉ាយដែលអ្នកគេគំរាមថានឹងសម្លាប់បើមិនព្រមរៀបការគ
hai nhóm có miền sơn tây mình nè để khi bằng cọp ao từ mớ cà rồng lốp tây mình nè tiếc để khi bằng không ở rìa cà hai con bạn để sẹt xem nụ hoa kim ăn chấm đậu mùi tiết nước sấm tươi muối cứ ai cả xa thì bấy lứa pi bầm buôn phàm bầm buôn ông phê sơn sơn buôn pi muối bầm bấy bầm buôn bấy chấm xa khmer sơn sơn bầm pi bấy bầm bấy bấy buôn bầm pi hai mươi bảy rắn sơn sơn bầm pi sơn muối buôn bầm buôn bầm muối stream này nick còn gì thả Her husband had died, and she was all for me. And she states, "My husband was a French soldier. They hanged my husband. Five months later, they told me I had to marry, but I refused. They took me to the front of the army. They took me to the front of the army. They took me to the front of the army. They took me to the front of the army. They took me to the front of the army. They took me to the front of the army. They took me to the front of the army. They took me to the front of the army. They took me to the front of the army. They took me to the front of the army. They took me to the front of the army. Côn bay nè bọc nhóm bàn xe lập từ hơi hơi nhóm thà Nói anh chị một đau cọc nhóm chú mùi vụ kê tử hơi Bà nè anh chăm một không ốc chăm rịp cả nụ Ê lâu nít nhóm sư chú cụt hơi Ta lúc xây bàn lưu cạn này bàm nì Xinh tiết đà lực tì I'm sorry I don't record my conversation with her Chăm lời khi mình chăm cả sân thân này chứ mùi gọt nhịp tế Sân nụ chứ mùi bọt xâm phía hơi nâng sức cả đầy đọ xa rong nước nông rồi bài ca tương bày ní Ta bọt xâm phía tương ọt nụ lúc xa đây thuốc luôn ái như rư có chăm nuôi ca bọt lúc xa đây đã thuốc ca chứ mùi lúc xa đây Chăm lời cả sắc xa xa chiều tìm mùi rụng bọc khi nhóm nốt Đã khi nhóm chú nâng nâng từ tờ lạc cả bực mình nếch nhóm bàn thua được luôn ái nhá nâng sẽ hạ sư vực khi nhóm mình nẹ chân mình nếp bì nẹ Rồi à sức phâu mùi tiết đà là thà Many interviews were conducted by me, but some were conducted by my students. Panai, my chung nuôn, ku kyum chin as a peer, you may have another evidence of my another book on gender based violence against sexual minorities in the community of Thai, which I also documented many forced marriages. All the accounts are taken by me. I did all the interviews. Did you also hear accounts? Xem nụ ta lực thay thức lập bàn lưu rừng ở rào ẩm phí một nụ Đại thạc kỳ bụng không Ở riêng cá Khi bạn lấy xét hơi kỳ bình chôn Ở tựa cá thông ngôn rừng có kỳ bình chôn Tớ đã không luôn rừng đã không bè rừng thế Chầm lời Chà khi miên rừng chỉ trả Ẩm phí cá đã tôn được cầm Cá đã tổ chức tốt Nên được bạn được xác 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 Nên Hỏi kế có ban đường chung niên từ mình đi ọp ở rung bầy khai Tòa mẫu Việt Nam có ban chỗ sử dụng ở chỗ cảm chế Hỏi anh chân cực thà hơi mùi tiết được nông đầm mình chùm nông trường thà Khi chùm đại được nông xe mái dùng kìm nông chùm nông đất hơi nơi rìm nẹ nơ Xin rếp đè ở bạp nhầm thà kì bình chùm cọt tờ ดีเอ듀เคชั่นแคมป์เพราะว่าสิ่งที่เราต้องการคือการเรียนรู้ในการเรียนรู้ในการเรียนรู้ในการเรียนรู้ในการเรียนรู้ในการเรียนรู้
may chum lai depend on the location the governance system of the location uh, and the area in my opinion uh, in some areas uh, apparently the village chief uh, uh, is very sympathetic and very nice so even though the, the, the people are forced to engage in the very tough labor still uh, the village chief was sympathetic uh, and very nice and under those conditions conditions People there to uh, question or refuse their proposal. But in other areas, we are more ruled at the very level, imposed a strict level, a strict regulation. People's lives were filled with terror. They were terrified and they were scared all the time. So it could have been impossible to raise their voices to say more. No. And just briefly, we will discuss uh, where your contribution is conducted and where people uh, uh, gave you evidence of reports of these false marriages. Was with the people that um, said they would be in terror in fear um, refusing if they refused to accept ហើយគេមិនអាចនិយាយបដិសេធមិនព្រមរាជការឬក៏មិនហៀនប្រឆាំងនឹងបញ្ជារាជការអញ្ចឹងក្នុងករណីដែលមនុស្សអ្នកន
An interview was conducted um, with a female who states she was beaten by her husband after refusing to have sex after the wedding. And she states, my second husband was a new person. At the first day of the wedding, he beat me because he did not love him and refused to have sex. He hit me on the thighs with his hands, so I couldn't struggle, and it made it easier for him to have sex with me. But my question is, is that type of account common or isolated where her husband would um, beat um, his new wife if she didn't consummate the marriage? Is that a common story or an isolated one? Is that a common story or Mean cả nơi chân đại. It's very difficult to answer your question because it depends on the individual. Apparently, some men use violence. Could be because he was also scared. He has to consummate the marriage, and that drove him to use the violence against his wife. But I also met men who used to beat their wives when they were young. They were very scared and could not do it. They were very scared and could not do it. They were very scared and could not do it. They were very scared and could not do it. They were very scared and could not do it. They were very scared and could not do it. They were very scared. They were deprived of their masculinities to initiate the marriage, to start controlling the marriage life. And on the first day, he was forced to see a wife that he has to be a provider and a protector, according to the Cambodian tradition. Khmer Rouge could not get rid of those stereotypes. Masculinity among the Cambodian men. Then those men also wanted to treat their wives nice. They wanted their wives to like him. And then they were at a loss. They did not know how to do in front of the wife. Who was so scared and who was apparently refusing him. So this account, there were some accounts like this, but not all men who are forced into marriage behave in this way. And I cannot say it was rather common or rare. Did um, the couples that were forcibly married, um, did you hear accounts from witnesses that uh, they were being monitored by the Khmer Rouge local authorities um, to ensure that the marriage was consummated? Did you hear accounts of that nature? Yes, I heard those stories, particularly by the people who were forced to marry against their will. And were those um, accounts um, that they were being monitored um, to ensure that the marriage was consummated? Uh, were they, were they common accounts? Were they common accounts? Were they common accounts? I heard many stories, but I cannot say it was common. It could have been common. Um, in the first day, um, the women were a couple being forced to marry. Um, you, did you hear any accounts of um, women that have become pregnant because of that forced marriage? And particularly um, any uh, thoughts that those women, women had in relation to uh, wanting to abort 
ចំពោះកណីដែលថាស្ត្រីគាត់មានតិពោះគាត់ចង់រំលូតកូនអីជាដើមតាមធ្លាប់ជួបកណីបែបនឹងដែរទេ Those women did not want to get pregnant in the first time. So there is no difference between the women who are forced to marry or who are voluntarily married and authorized to get married.